Folks are born, made a way to fly Ooh, the red, white, and green And when the band plays Kaiser hymn Ooh, they draft you for the war machine It ain't me, it ain't me I ain't Prince Ferdinand, son, son It ain't me, it ain't me Howdy there, folks, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Now, if you want to see, I know I'd mentioned this on a previous playthrough, and I'm not sure how much longer this save will actually be loadable. So I'm going to show you guys uh, very briefly the personal uh, playthrough I play, which is not recorded. Um, the American playthrough, or what we called in the Black Pants Legion, it was... Uh, labeled the exceptionalism run where i started off doing a lot of theodore roosevelt great white fleet exceptionalism and just started stomping on the world um i applied the monroe doctrine to all corners of the earth and i'm just going to show you what the world looks like in 1952. for those of you who think i only play the beginning of this game no i do play the full long campaign and yes it is arduous and difficult. It is incredibly arduous and difficult. So let me show you an alternative history, if you will. Let us embrace it. So as you can see, America is pretty much pretty great uh, in this playthrough. It's in May of 1952. I have a lot of money. I make a lot of money every turn. The Caribbean's American. Uh, it's very American. Uh, bits of South America are American. Bits of Africa are American, Madagascar is American, uh, you know, it, bits, bits of Asia are American, Japan is American, bits of Russia are American, Australia is American, uh, New Zealand's American, um, a lot of, a lot of the Pacific is definitely American, um, I let Canada survive. Spain is American, the Mediterranean is American, Italy is American, Austro-Hungary is American, Beirut and Lebanon, Palestine, American. Most of England is American, except for Southern England. I let them keep that. I, I just did everything. And I also unified Ireland, which is American. It's how you do things in an age of exceptionalism. Um, the ships in my playthrough of this are ridiculous, as is my naval prestige. But... Getting to this point in this game is incredibly, incredibly difficult. So, do challenge yourself and see how long you can make things go. But also see what sort of wild and weird history you can make happen. Right now I'm trying to see how long I can make the Austro-Hungarian Empire last. If my goal is to see if I can make it outlast its actual historical dissolution date, this is going to be a challenge. But dun 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 I have the Italian playthrough intro song stuck in my head. But so yeah, we are the Austro-Hungarian Navy. Um, we have some unrest. We have a lot of naval prestige. We have a lot of torpedo boats. And as you may recall, we are building more ships right now. So we have a lot of these little boats. We are at war with a big power, and they're very scary and very terrifying. But we are building more battleships. The most of my battleships are going to Portugal and the Netherlands, which is insane. I don't know how they're affording it, but I have a prediction that they are going to do scary things in Europe. So that's none of my business. As far as our battleships have, we have boat class, which I would never take to sea. Uh, that, that thing is just awful, but I'm gonna see how long I can, you know, keep it around. We have the Heller, which is cheap as hell. We have the Ersatz battleship, which is essentially a, um, well, it, let's not talk about it. But we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna do the best we can, which is kind of what we do. We have very advanced technology, and we're currently refitting one battleship, and we have eight battleships remaining. My objective is to try to control as much of the ocean as possible, but I'm also recognizing that I am at war with a great power right now, and America has a gigundo industry, which can very easily roll over and kill me at any time. If America gets its shit together and comes all the way over here with its mighty battle fleet, I will be in trouble. So I have 40 torpedo boats hanging out there, and I am going to do my best to spend the rest of them, these hellers, as I, as I must. Now let's get reacquainted with our fleet, shall we? 
because it's been a hot minute since I've recorded and I want to make sure that everything is okay. So I have some of the boat class left, and most of these are in Spalato and Odessa. Um, the boat class is a ship. Uh, most of the... Novosiersk? Yeah, I have a handful of these things in Novosiersk, which is fine, um, because that's just where they are. The, the, little, the little boats are there. But we have some of these torpedo boats spread everywhere I need them. Uh, the rest are anchored in the western end of the Mediterranean, just kind of hanging out and being boats, but I can pour out more if I need them to. Now, when it comes down to larger battleships, um, I have built a number of ships, and by that I mean the Arsats is basically most of my boats, but if memory serves... Memory serves. I do have... God, these are really tiny. I do have some other boats. I have the Mediterranean uh, Dumper, uh, which is the Habsburg class, which I built just to kind of appease some people. Um, it is a terrible ship. It is not good. It is very simple in this time period, and it is already obsolete. That shouldn't really be a problem for me, but... It will be. This thing is just going to burn. Um, it is It is going to be one of those ships I keep around as just like a mascot. I'm going to go, but I still have this. Every time the taxpayers say that I buy too much new stuff, I'm going to point to that. They're going to cry because generations of people have been on board. Britain and the United States have gone to war. Britain and China have gone to war. Um, that's cool. None of my business, though. Britain thinks I'm neat. France also thinks I'm neat. Germany is probably not going to be my pal. China's probably going to go to war with me any day. Italy is on the fence and might decide to join. The Spanish are going to be Spanish, so that means they could flip either way in this. The reason I say that is Spain has ports in the Atlantic and Spain has ports in the Mediterranean. So whenever a war escalates on either of these fronts, they can flip. They can suddenly get involved, and that's why you have to be careful with them. Now what I'm going to do is continue my research into better stuff because as soon as I get uh, some of these fancier explosives, I will be able to absolutely shellac my enemies. That is what we do. The weight of tiny shells and the weight of tiny shells filled with things like picric acid are um, going to be absolutely fantastic. And by that I mean incendiary. Uh, okay, China is threatening us. That, that's interesting because I've never been over there. And I'm, I'm just going to shrug. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So, picric acid is a predecessor, for those of you who don't know, of trinitrotoluene. Uh, picric acid is trinitrophenol. Uh, it's really dangerous to handle. And don't. It's, it's very, very bad as an explosive in terms of safety. It's great as an incendiary, but uh, if you go ahead and go ahead and do a search on picric acid, you'll see why it's not used for very long as an explosive. It has a lot of problems, and by problems, I mean really substantial problems. Uh, picric acid is not your friend. Picric acid is one of those things that if you use it poorly, you will end up burning your whole Navy down. Now, the U.S. Navy is over here and is doing nothing. The Chinese Navy is also really doing nothing, so I'm not terribly concerned. The real concern here is that my shipyard is mostly building foreign ships, and this could cripple me because I need to build my own boats. Even though those are ruinously expensive, I need to build my own boats. And I'm hoping to get picric acid in some of these boats, especially the little ones where I don't care if they explode. Um, that's what little boats are for. They are attritionable assets. You use them like uh, soup crackers in Chile. You, you essentially use them as filler material. They are not useful long term. They aren't. They're not... Um, they're not going to help me win this war. They're going to help me destabilize the enemy so that the big ships can win this war. And as time goes on, hordes of little boats will certainly lose. They lose the ability to do long-range missions. They lose the ability 
to actually do damage. And other than being a way of getting torpedoes very cheaply to target, um, they start to lose that strategic balance. Because when you get into that era of very competent... Uh-oh. Japan offers an alliance. No. No, thank you. I, I, I don't need any more entanglements uh, in the Pacific. I'm going to wait till the Chinese Navy comes over here and then I'm going to flood them with torpedo boats. As far as the Americans go, it looks like they don't want to come into the Mediterranean. Uh, they have virtually nothing over here that will do anything. So I'm going to tell them to politely but firmly stay out while I build my own fleet. I'm just going to be like, um, go away. And that is my primary objective. Objective of Navy, keep people away from your shores. Uh, that's not really... That's not really the purpose of a Navy, specifically. It's to patrol the commons, um, as it was laid down by Mr. Mann. But the other objective is to be kind of the day-to-day -day interaction uh, with foreign powers. I know that a lot of people think that the Navy's job is primarily to defend the homeland, but it actually serves a big backing to commercial purposes. Can the German Empire... All right, you know what? Yes, let's invest in the Germans because they're our neighbors and we both speak German, kind of. However, the Austro-Hungarian Navy and Empire speaks like 500 languages, so this is going to be a little tricksy, to say the least. Portugal wants another battleship, which is just going to fuck up my whole shipbuilding plans, but whatever. I don't care. Um, I'm going to do my best to try to make a navy that is more modern than the enemy as quickly as possible. Uh, that Habsburg battleship, I will just take out once in a while, patrol the Mediterranean and be a weirdo with it. I'm just going to kind of walk around and be like, this is my battleship. It's really fancy, even though it's not. And I can use that for foreign port visits. You know, they're like, oh, the Navy's coming to town. Send the crap. Do not send the good boats. Send the garbage. We're also entering the era of dreadnoughts, which is where things are going to escalate because between 1906 and 19. 20, you see a lot of rapid evolutions of what ships are. You go from dreadnoughts to super dreadnoughts very quickly, and then you see all sorts of insane escalations of conflict. So, this will be fun. I'm going to have 10 standard dreadnoughts and then one old frumpy battleship. Uh, okay, alliance seems possible. Yeah, I'll tie France into this war. Uh, so, France, Germany, and Austro Hungary are one power block now. And that allows me to be a dick to America, hopefully. That will also help me uh, keep America out of the Mediterranean. So yeah, they can all fuck off, and I can rule the seas as best possible. I had thought about playing as the Japanese in one of these playthroughs, just so I could be weird. Um, you have a lot of ocean to patrol, and I think it would be funny to do it just, just very, very... Uh, Fancy, where you sit there and you build yourself a giant yacht navy of just super high-end battleships and cruisers and you just do the Yamato thing. Looks like America is slowly thinking of sending ships over here, so I'm going to be decisive and move my ships over to America's territory. And I'm going to see what they do about it. Most of their fleet looks like it's in the Pacific, which, good luck. It's not going to help you. Um, let's see. I'm going to see if I can't take Maine. I'm going to take... I'm going to send Maine... I'm going to send my ships out to Maine. And I'm going to send my cruisers out to do the same. I'm going to send half the cruiser squadron out, out to Maine as well. The cruiser squadron is not very good, but it does exist. Right? That's, that's what we can say about the cruiser squadron. Is it a good ship? series of ships no no the cruiser squadron is in fact very challenged uh but i'm gonna keep also improving relations with japan just to make sure they don't sour on us the soviet union and spain are looking like they're slowly not liking who we are that's okay as soon as i finish building these battleships though especially the new ones i'll probably have to tailor my funds a little bit uh because building these ships is very expensive
And uh, I have all the torpedo boats for localized defense. The Mediterranean is more than fine for these things to play around in. They should be fine. Looks like Japan doesn't give a fuck. I was like, hey, high five guys, and they just stared at me. And I was like, well, I, come on, I'm pretty cool. And they just stared at me. And I was like, do you hate or love me? And they just stared at me, and I'm like, all right. With these coastal defense ships, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to cross the Atlantic Ocean, which some of you are going to start screaming, that's not what they're for, Tex. And I'll agree, coastal defense ships are... In fact, not really for that. And in this era from like the 1880s to the, you know, I'd say 19 teens, you find a brief resurgence of these really interesting uh, coastal defense ship ideas. A lot of them come from what are traditionally not giant sea powers in modern times. So Sweden has a bunch of really interesting coastal defense battleships made. And by a lot, I mean more than one. Typically, uh, most large or cool ships in this era exist on paper because naval war planners will come up to their government and be like, I need umpteen bajillion dollars. And most of their governments go no because it's very expensive. Now, one of the, one of the ships that I was talking about is, uh, I cannot pronounce Swedish, so I'm not going to say that this is the correct way of saying it. But the uh, Sverige uh, coastal defense ships are really interesting. Uh, they were built in, I believe, Gothenburg. And I know Cockham's was also involved in building it. They were preceded, if memory serves, by the Oscar II class. And these are coastal defense ships, um, which means they're not really battleships. And they were built in about 1912. I know they built three of them. And I know they were at about seven to 8,000 tons displaced. Um, and while that may sound small, at least by modern standing, you'd say, Tex, that's barely a cruiser by World War II standards. That, that's fine. These were like micro battleships. Um, they had 11-inch guns full and aft. They had 6-inch guns all over them. And they had 75-millimeter guns as well. And they as well had fairly decent armor. The main belt was almost eight inches, again, if memory serves. And these things were essentially micro battleships that could offer a good coastal defense of the homeland. They weren't designed to be the be-all, end-all, everything combined defense vessel, but they were enough of a dissuasion should an enemy try to bully Sweden that you could send them out and brawl with them. You could maul an invasion fleet with something like this. And it's not about winning the war, but buying time. And it prevents the enemy from deciding to take one of your islands, for instance. If you can put something off that island and anchor it there that has some artillery range and has some teeth. And a lot of navies adopt this mindset of using these little ships as like gatekeepers or goalies. They're micro battleships in all but name. Some will argue that this same concept is used in the Panzerschiff or, you know, uh, the stuff the, uh, the crowds were building, which are really just kind of bigger heavy cruisers for the era, but with global reach and the ability to commerce raid and also fight uh, battle cruisers. So it's, it's a bunch of really weird mission profiles, but these are not really designed to go very far. Coastal defense ships are just like defense monitor monitors or harbor defense ships from the preceding generation. They're overbuilt to be able to fight a defensive war close to the coast and be resupplied. Also, maybe ferry troops if need be. Spain is turning slowly against us, but now I'm sinking transports off Maine, and that's what you get. So, ha ha. Now, I'm going to see if I can take Maine away from the United States so we can have Austro-Hungarian Maine. Is this cursed? Yes. Will I stop? No. I could probably take Maine. I think I have more than enough tonnage to make this happen. Now, the question is, is can I economically weather the consequences of this? Looks like any... yeah. Okay, China is slowly making it past Sumatra and Malaysia. And it's probably going to take them another six months to get out of here. So this is a Pacific squadron trying to come over and be a bully. And it's not going to work because I... It's range. Range of operations are going to work against them. That's not a my bad. That's a them bad. And I don't have to build a damn boat if I don't want to right now. 
I can just wait and I can whittle away my forces as I will. And as soon as I take uh, Maine away from the United States, they will probably get very mad. <laughs> they, they will probably decide that I need to be destroyed. And that's fine because that's how you fight. You gain an asymmetric advantage over the enemy, whether it be technology, placement of forces, strategic fuckery, these sorts of things are what make a military commander useful. Um, you need to be able to turn the tables on the enemy and make them back down. But don't mistake a general for a statesman. You find a lot of people try to be both and it doesn't work out in the end. So, so far I've sunk a few transports, though America has a giant transport fleet and it looks like uh, America is starting to do Monroe Doctrine, but angrier by taking Columbia. So good luck with that, boys. I instead am going to be a dick, and I'm going to wait for the Chinese Navy, if it even shows up, which I doubt it will. But that's fine. It says that I will need... Oh, I do not have good odds on this. Yes, I do not have good odds on this at all. So that is that is a problem. Um, I'm going to have to move the other chunk of my cruiser fleet over here, which is going to be disastrously expensive. And that's okay. That is okay. I'm also going to look through whatever else I got on the slipyards that I could actually think would make it across the Mediterranean, which is probably not much. And that's okay. It's okay. You can have really bad boats and you can just embrace them. Um, not all navies are going to be good at all the things. Most navies are going to be good at a handful of things. Uh, a lot of people think that a navy is going to be all multi-mission stuff, and that's very rare that it ever accomplishes this. So, uh, my fleet is setting out from Odessa to, to back up the invasion. But as you can see, the monthly balance of operating these fuckers is really high. And that's not good. That is, in fact, bad. So my boys are going to come over and try to add extra tonnage to this invasion. Now, if I fail, I can then at least attempt to raid the American ports along the seaboard with my navy, which is on paper a navy. Um, I know that this is not the smartest, sanest, or wisest of options, but it's what I can do. I'm Austro-Hungary. I am not a global navy power. I am an old empire at this time, holding on as best I can. Being aggressive in this sense is not wise, suggested, or sane. But doing it is also ballsy and unexpected, and I doubt the US Navy would have fleet problems capable of understanding any of this. Not Greece wants a battleship. Excellent. Now let's look at our finances because this is becoming now a month-to-month -month affair and I'm going to do my best to hold on to what I have. I know that scrapping large parts of my navy is always an option to save money, but I don't want to do that. I want to continue my operations and not diminish in power as the war goes on. So it looks like Portugal gets its next battleship in five months, Netherlands in six, Portugal another one in nine months, Netherlands in another nine months, nine months until mine are done, and then a few more orders, Greece buying another ship because it's Greece. So let's go ahead and look at what we have heavy tonnage wise that is not in the water. Uh, we have our battleships being made. All the boat classes are going, so we are doing our best. We have put, we have deployed as much power as we can. Looks like we have a 61% chance now with the other cruisers lining up. I'm going to have to reduce training and research and development in order to make this work. And that's fine, because if I can take Maine away, uh, we can have Austro-Hungarian Maine which will result in a whole bunch of really weird novels. Austro-Hungarian Stephen King would be hilarious. Uh, Austro-Hungarian... Um, God, Austro-Hungarian H.P. Lovecraft. I'm down for it. I think that would be insane. You would have a lot of weirdness. Okay, the Italian... The Italians are provoking me a little bit. The Ottomans are going for Kuwait, which is fascinating. And now I have to modify my budget. Uh, in order to actually run this Navy. I know this is not going to be good, 
but I'm going to do what I can to make the Austro-Hungarian Empire last. So I'm going to take my naval training all the way down to like 20, uh, let's say 40%. I know that sounds really bad, but that's okay. And I'm going to take my R&D to 50% because I'm ahead of most world navies. Does this slow me down? Yes. Yes, it does. That's okay. I'm going to take land to pay it back. And as soon as I pop some more ships out, my cost will go down, and then I can concentrate on things I need to. And whatever ships survive this war will be upgraded. The ships that don't survive this war, you know, letters home. All right, looks like we're taking out more transports from America, so that will undermine their everything. Looks like the American Navy is not willing to enter the Mediterranean because they know I have all these torpedo boats hanging off of Gibraltar, which is hilarious. Looks like my odds of winning this invasion have declined, which is unfortunate, but that happens. That happens a lot. It also looks like my technology is bouncing back and forth between advanced and very advanced, so we're starting to slip in the technological arms race. However, I'm doing damage to the American economy which is exactly what I need to do. Also, it looks like I can now build even fancier dreadnoughts, which is exactly what I'm going for. I'm also going to try to get steam turbines, which will allow me to more efficiently patrol the world, and it will boost my range and the efficiency of the engines, meaning the engines can be a little bit lighter, meaning I can add more engine to make up for that weight difference and make them faster. So I can build a navy that can keep the enemy at range and tell them to fuck off constantly. However, it looks like the US Navy has shown up right off Maine and is taking issue with my invasion attempt. Now, if I lose this invasion, that's fine. I'll just go down to Miami and do it again. I will continue to be belligerent toward the Americans in their own backyard as frequently as possible until they stop the war. This is what I want to do. So, looks like we're gonna fight and destroy a bunch of ships in port. Ah, so they sent the destroyer squadron to try to stop me. Good luck, America, because this is your backyard. My cruisers are going to have very slow speed, probably. They're very definitely at the end of their coaling, and I doubt that Canada is going to let us have coal to fight America. This were a hundred years in previous time, that could be negotiated. <laughs> I mean, Canada burned the White House down. But yeah, we're going to go out here and do what we do best. And uh, let's see, how, how low are they on coal? Looks like they have plenty for now. So we're going to form up with our boats, which are a combination of ideas, most of them fairly bad. And we are going to do our best. So we're going to form up uh, abreast. We're going to use HE, and I'm going to tell my guys to shoot like crazy. We are not going to go for speed. I'm going to let the enemy in choose to engage me. And it looks like, yes, we have low fuel in quite a bit of the fleet, meaning um, our ability to do anything is not going to be great. And that's fine. I hear all that banging in the background. That just means that the Navy is doing what it does. And some of you will point out this looks like a bunch of fishing trawlers went to war. You're not wrong. These boats would be more at home in something like Sunless Sea than in the open ocean. These are not boats designed for the perils of the Atlantic, and I would not be surprised if the game added realism where ships like this would just sink trying to cross. You'd hit a few waves, you'd take on some water, the engines would stop working, and to the bottom. And considering it took these things like, I don't know, weeks and weeks and weeks to cross the North Atlantic, these things are as slow as Age of Sail ships. All right, here they come. They're laying down smonk as they do, and that's fine. My guys are shooting at movement, which is how I play the Hunter Call of the Wild game. I'm like, what was that? Time to die. All right, these guys are coming in fast. These are fairly modern destroyers. This could be a problem. All I need is one good hit to sink these, or most of them, but one good decent hit of those main batteries will send them down. These are 8-inch guns, but they are very old and on very old turrets, so not exactly great. They're going to start launching torps here in a second. However, yeah, they already have. Okay, boys. Take it on the chin. You're not going to have the speed to maneuver.
Just hope they don't work. Okay, they have four inch guns, which means their main guns are going to be able to start fires. But those torpedoes are where I'm da in danger. Um, they look like they have a lot of destroyers, which are probably going to start doing figure eights. That torpedo just exploded. All right. 0.6% chances to hit. This is not great. However, my ships are slow enough that it's probably making their torpedo shots very aggravating to plot out. Because they're, they're aiming at where they think I'm going to be, and I'm not going to. Okay, the Tiger is going down. It has taken a lot of water. Water is best when outside the boat. However, now that their smonk has worn off and my guys are at knife fight distance, this is going to work just fine. All right. Come on, come on. Oh, those are converging. I am fucked. Now I can sink their whole fleet. Oh, two duds. I got lucky. Keep going, keep going, boys. Keep going. They're gonna come in here and launch torps at me at point blank range, but they're gonna pay for it. American Destroyer Squadron, go away. Re, says the Austro Hungarian Navy. Re, indeed. No, 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 no. Oh, that's a bad hit on the nose. Ah, the USS Quick. That's a good name for a destroyer. Looks like they're disengaging. All it will take is one of these 8-inch rounds to hit it. My guys have catastrophically low fuel. It looks like the Tiger may survive, but with extreme damage. That is a lot of water. They'll start to pull that hull apart. This is a lot of shells flying out there. Now go away. He's out there trying to reload his torpedo tubes before he comes back in again. I just have to hope that some of my guys manage to land some hits. Lamberton is on fire, which is still burning. They're not going to be able to keep this up, though. Their guys are going to have to come back in to do damage. And uh, the Austro-Hungarian Navy is a gaggle fuck of weirdos, so this is going to be really bad. Alright, they're laying Smonk, which means they're probably coming back in for a run. My guys are just shooting at where they think they are. And they've stopped, they've lost contact. As soon as they come out of this smoke, though, it's gonna be on. It's gonna be on like Donkey Kong. Let's see. Are they smart enough? Oh yeah. They're continuing to lay smoke and maneuver. They were waiting for torpedoes. All right, concentrate fire, boys. So he's charging right into the center here, just to enchant, just to enhance his chances of releasing a torp on me. And uh, here we go, rounds in, rounds in, rounds in, rounds in. Oh, there's a hit. That's a good fire. Okay, torp out. That may hit, that's not a bad a shot for him. All right, that's a really good hit he got on me. And that's right amidships, so that's going to be right in the engine space. That is not where you want to hit. Once the engines go out, you lose your pumps. Once you lose your pumps, you sink. Some people think ships displace water, which allows them to float. Quite frequently, it's the pumps that keep large ships working because there's constantly water coming in somewhere. All right, keep swinging, keep swinging. There's the quick. He's probably going to take a, sh a hit on accident coming back in on my lead ship. So he's done damage to two of my ships that is fairly catastrophic. 
it's probably enough, if not more than enough, to cause them to lose uh, their place in formation and become combat ineffective. Enough flooding on ships with this shallow of a uh, main deck means you're going to lose angles on the main gun. You're not going to be able to engage the enemy. All right, here comes another twerp. We're going to slightly adjust course, slightly, and hope it goes wide, which it will. Yeah, that's what you get. Get out of here. All right, so we're starting to nail this guy here. My guys look like they're just shooting at everything but the target. They're just filling the ocean with, sh with shells because I guess they want to kill dolphins or something. I don't know. It's more likely a miss than an intentional hit will do damage. He may manage to escape. He may also lay smoke and come back around for another torpedo run. Yep. All right, we're going to end the battle before this goes on for another 30 minutes. But, victory. So I managed to sink most of his destroyers, which is probably his quick reaction force for this coast. He's probably going to have to bring his big ships around from the Pacific to do anything. I hope to disrupt enough of his naval operations in that time to be a heinous inconvenience. And I will use my cruisers as disposable assets versus his navy while preserving my battleships as long as possible. Then I will use them. So, so far, war is going pretty good against America. China and the Great Britain are fighting each other. And it looks like, yeah, this is an interesting fight. So China's got its handful, and it looks like we have failed to conquer Maine, which is unfortunate. The rest of the American fleet, though, is looking to transit, including their battleship squadrons, which is where this can still play out. I'm going to try to invade the United States again. I'm going to try to take Maine again. I know that this is a massive amount of troops to raise and lose. This could really cause a lot of problems back home. I don't care. However, that monthly balance has started to go up, which means I can tweak my research and my training. I'm going to try to maintain as much of that as possible. Now, if I lose these ships over here, this is the end of the Austro-Hungarian Navy. There's going to be no way in fuck that I will be able to return back home. They will hang me. They will just go, get out. I will be in trouble. All right, so now things are getting bad at home. However, I'm going to spend, that's more money than I have. That is, I'm gonna have to use, uh, yeah strong police force to make the crowd go away, uh, which is going to cause my unrest to go up. Uh, Portugal wants another battleship, which is fine. Okay, France tried to take Puerto Rico, which is interesting. I'm going to make sure my allies are all happy. That's good. China still doesn't like me for unknown reason. That's fine. Spain is getting increasingly mad at me, which is interesting. I am now going to increase my research, though, to 74%. And I'm going to do what I can to try to maintain some primacy over my opponents. Putting research into the right things. It has only taken many, many months for my ships to slowly crawl their way across the Atlantic. And once those other two battleships are done, I'm probably going to leave them in the Mediterranean. Because if any of these navies break through and suddenly bring battleships into the Mediterranean, I may not be able to stop them with my whittle bitty boats. They're not going to uh, easily stop me there. Or I, not them, rather. China has not done a single showing, but I am more than willing to admit that the Americans are going to make this hard for me. It looks like I have a 90% chance this time with my navy not being harassed. If I can take Maine, America will understand that Austro-Hungary is not just a meme, but an actual nation. After that, I'll see if I can't take Boston. I have friends of mine in that area, and they will be very upset. They will say, why is there goulash in Boston? And I'll say, don't worry about it. All right, Soviet Union's head of the government, or rather the head of their navy got fired, which is hilarious. That means he's spending way too much money. 
that will be me if I fuck this up. I'm gonna do my best to make them happy. I'm probably not gonna make the Soviets happy. That's okay. I've already fought them. It'll work out as it works out or not. Getting additional research into boilers as well is going to be very useful. Uh, I can more efficiently burn the coal, which will allow me to have greater range. I'm also going to slowly start putting work into stuff like naval communications and maneuver warfare, which allows me to have better formations. My balance is slowly correcting, so that's good. We're slowly crawling our way out of this, and as soon as the war ends, I'm going to be in an economic disaster. So I need to make sure that I am not spending too much money, because that money will then very, very, very quickly go bad. You will find that all of a sudden the war is over, and the politicians will go, give me that money back, and you will have a lot less. So you'll build a naval operations unit uh, budget for war, and then the war ends, and you suddenly find yourselves with zero ducats, and you're like, uh-oh. And they go, yeah, you are fucked. And you go, but I built this giant battleship fleet. And they're like, yes, now get rid of it. And then you cry a lot. So that's how it works. Um, I'm going to tell, uh, let's see. Oh, they're accusing me of war crimes? Yeah, that happens. It's war. Uh, someone argued that war is a crime, so I'm just gonna say, yep. They're gonna be like, why are you so, why are you so mad and angry? And I'd, I'd be like, why are you accusing me of war crimes? I haven't seen your fucking navy. Like, I, how would I do war crimes versus you? Are you sure you're not talking about the British? Okay, looks like we might get Maine. If we get Austro-Hungarian Maine, I will then go down to Florida. And I will repeat the job. I'm not sure if I'll be able to take Boston. Boston has a lot of defenses. Boston has a large population. And that shipyard is very big. So taking large population centers from the enemy, while that does make money, uh, potentially is a disaster. All right, here they come back out again with another fleet. This time they brought a cruiser, a light cruiser at that, but I'm going to need to keep it away from my naval forces which are conducting a naval landing. I need them to stay away. They come out and attack every time I try to do a naval landing and last time they broke up my naval forces enough to where I failed. I need to beat them to death. I need to continue to ring their bell and cause casualties. I need them to go away. So they brought a light cruiser, which is probably bigger than my old heavy cruisers. They brought some destroyers and they brought some torpedo boats. And all of that looks fairly modern. My only defense is going to be to put these guys in a nice big pile. And then I'm going to need to uh, just sail at them as best I can and hope HE burns them down. My boats are very slow. They all have very low fuel. They have terrible sea handling. And I have a lot of problems in this game, also in real life, but we'll get there. Oh, listen to that. Ah, oh, the sound of paint being traded. All right, boys, let's roll. Let's roll coal until the engine. Wow, Klangenfurt. That sounds like a made up name. Yeah, my name is Kla Count Klangenfurt. Okay, they are definitely coming right at me. All right, let's roll and let's knock it down to half speed. We're rolling our engines back. We're rolling our engines back. We're rolling our engines back. We are not going to approach at full speed. We're going to make them come to us because we are very stupid. Those look like torpedo boats up here that are going to be running as an outrider. And I'm willing to bet the light cruiser holds in the back and then maintains speed throughout. I think the torpedo boats are on the left, I think that's the destroyers on the far right, and I think that's a light cruiser in the middle. Yeah, these guys are coming right in. These are torpedo boats. I'm gonna have to attrition a few boats just to just to keep them away. Oh, that's a hit. That's a good hit. Hell yeah, main battery. Good job, boys. The Austro-Hungarian Navy is very excited just to participate. And go away. Alright. That, yeah, that is. I called it. That's a light cruiser right there in the middle. Alright, let's concentrate fire on him. He has torpedoes and main battery guns that might hurt us. Oh, look at all them shells land in the neighborhood of him.
They're in the neighborhood. Come on. Do some math. I know you can do it. I know there's schools. Alright, so we are in the hell of a fight. Here we go. Come on, boys. You can do this. Oh, they're turning in. So I'm going to turn in. Let's just make this complex. Needlessly complex. Ooh, that's a hit. That's a hit. That's a hit. Oh, and right in the rudder space and gearboxes. That's not good. He has lost control of where he's going and he's going to cut his own torpedo boat off. This is where he sinks. Aggressive. Aggressive. Fire. Fire. Yes. Now sink him. He got a torpedo hit on the Graz as he went through. However, we've managed to do our damage. Our, their destroyer fleet is cutting a swath through my dudes. They're managing to get good hits. However, he is now in the center of that fatal funnel. <laughs> and he's like, uh-oh. And I'm like, yeah, your, your boats are not designed for taking point-blank main battery hits, are they? Eight-inch guns suck. Your boats are made of plywood. Welcome to the bottom. They're like, no, not my feelings. And I'm like, burn. Burn. Oh yeah, he's he's going down. All right, now let's continue our absolutely ridiculous use of naval firepower. Oh, that's a good hit. That is a catastrophic hit. He's like, um, um, um. He's like, I, I tell my family I made a mistake, and I'm like, I will do no such thing. Ah, oh, he's coming in close, is he? Now, yeah, it looks like, oh, oh, he's coming in for a torp. He, he wants to get one off. I'll let him have it. Bonk. I took that one. That's just so he could feel good as he sinks. Ah, yes. The torpedo boat USS Biddle, which seems to have run out of fuel. Um, and is just going to sit there while we figure out what ranging is. Come on, boys. You can do this. Sitting perfectly still, more or less impervious for a minute, as my guys tried to do some math. They're like, is it moving or are we moving? And I'm like, it, it's not moving. And they're like, oh. Oh. So we lost 50 guys, they lost 675. Most of them were on that light cruiser. Um, continuing to bludgeon the American fleet here is what we do. Our, our objective is to keep breaking them up because they are going to slowly work their way around and bring the battleships out here. And as soon as they do that, it's going to be bad. As soon as the battleships are here, it's going to be holy shit levels of bad, in fact. Um, yep. All right. There we go. Three. Yep. Okay. 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 Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. Got it. All right. So let's see where we are now. Uh, 93%. One more turn, and I think we might have Maine. Austro-Hungarian Maine, no longer a meme. Oh, come on, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go us. Give me Austro-Hungarian Maine. Please, game. This will be too funny. This... This... <laughs> This is going to be stupid. Oh, America is not going to accept this. They're going to be very upset. Uh, no, we're going to keep fighting. Um, German Empire and China. J Empire of Japan and China. They're fighting. And we own Maine, yes. However, their heavy cruisers have managed to come out and fight. Now, I like my odds better versus longer, bigger ships because they are longer, bigger targets for my very dumb, old, shitty boats. Which means I have a chance. I have a chance here. I've managed to symbolically take land from them. Now, at this point is where you would argue for a peace treaty. At this point, this is where you would say, give me something and I'll, I'll hold on to Maine, but I won't go after you elsewhere. Now, if they don't see it this way, I think I have come up with where I'm going to strike next, which is not the smartest thing in the world, but it is asymmetrical. That is what I need to do, is to continue to create a regular strategic dilemmas for them 
Because if I go head to head, their navy is big and mine is small. But if I go out of my way to be annoying, like jeopardize the Panama Canal and its construction, I win. So what I'm thinking is, they took Colombia, right? I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take Colombia, and we'll do Austro-Hungarian Colombia, in before people start suggesting Pablo Escobar, but Austro-Hungarian mustache. I, I could see it. Imagine Pablo Escobar in like a pickle haub, you know, with an Austro-Hungarian mustache and a big bowl of goulash. That, that, is, that is prime night. Someone's already entering that in as an AI art. So, yeah. All right. We need to sink these heavy cruisers. If we can start doing some serious casualties, the US Navy might back off. However, I may bait them into bringing more of their ships out, and they're fighting me piecemeal. The reason they're fighting me piecemeal is they should be forming up their Navy into a competent and large task force group in order to smash me utterly. Instead, they are feeding them to me as quickly as they can bring their ships to bear. So that's why we've been fighting them in smaller groups. I'm fighting smaller, more isolated patrols rather than the bulk of their main fleet because their main fleet has been doing world police stuff rather than being in one big bunch. All right, let's concentrate on the lead ship of the formation and see what we can do here. All right, there it is. That is an interesting cruiser. That is a very cursed cruiser. It has guns that are hanging off the side of it and wings that are... No! Now I have to sink these. I have to sink these for naval architects everywhere. Don't worry, boys. I'm doing this for you. Now, I doubt I'm going to get through their main belt, which looks like it's 15 inches of armor. Holy shit. But fire is great. Fire doesn't care about armor so much. You can set that whole deck on fire, and then all of a sudden the boat becomes very melty. That's where all that fancy structure doesn't work. He has 11-inch main guns as well, so holy shit. But he doesn't carry much ammo for them. So we're just going to start as many fires as possible, and hope that eats his crew, and then he can't do as much. Now, my navy is not faring so well, because as soon as he starts to solve his gunnery problems, he is going to start clapping my guys. So I'm going to do what I can to start as much fire as possible and uh, just try to keep him away from me. Yeah, they're starting to penetrate my ships fairly easily because at this range, armor doesn't mean so much. Unless you design ships like I do and they're just iron bathtubs, but yeah, okay, he's getting in torp range because, oh my god, the Memphis is on fire? It has sunk? All right, Canberra, why would you name it that? Oh, he fired a torpedo and it's a dud. So I'm going to keep trying to set these things on fire as best possible. I want them to burn. He is continuing to make torpedo attacks because that is his best offensive bet right now. Torpedoes deliver a lot of damage if they work, if they hit. That's a lot of if, because keep having duds. All right, so the Canberra is burning very badly. Uh, continue, boys. Continue. Continue. Hurt them. Hurt their feelings. I think I might be able to take... Yes! Fire is the great equalizer. Time to burn down Chicago. USS Chicago is like, no, please don't. And I'm like, yes, you will now fight my coastal defense ships. Oh, that is a clean sweep. The lobster of Maine is mine. Stay away from my Navy. Well, looks like I win. Let's see if we can force some sort of diplomatic outcome that doesn't result in the destruction of my navy. So far, China has not come over here, which is pretty much what I expected. Now it is time to move down the coast. Now, each of these port facilities is goddamn huge. I might be able to take Miami. I'm pretty certain, though. Let's see. 
Yeah, I could probably take Colombia. So let's go get the other end of the Mediterranean and go ahead and stop American expansionism. Let's go strangle it in its cradle and prevent them from doing anything to South America. I'm going to actually enforce the Monroe Doctrine, but from the Austro-Hungarian point of view. I'm going to say, no, these are our friends. And they will go, please stop. And I'll say, no. By my waxed mustache, no. Absolutely not. I will do my best to say no to them. All right, so we're about to get into better smoke composition for our smoke screens, which is good. I'm slowly getting into better armor forging and range finders, which is also very good. Our fleet is doing well. I'm waiting until I can get the, uh, yep, okay. I have the two ersatz class battleships, which will be continuing to do their thing, which is good. And I am halfway through my naval building, so that's good. I'm not going to add anything more onto my naval building at this time. This is where you fuck up in a campaign. For those of you trying to play your own version of this, do not suddenly go, oh, I have dockyards open, they need to be full, especially when you're already running a deficit. This is how you sink your navy without fighting a war. You will get to the point where you've built too much stuff, you cannot afford to operate, you then have to cut your research and development, your training and everything else to build the ships, then you fall behind the enemy and all you have is a bunch of obsolete ships you can't operate, or if you do, you die. It becomes very, 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 very bad. Looks like America has been trying to negotiate, which I have said no. I, I've just said absolutely not. I've said no thank you. I've said please go away. All right, onward and onward and onward and onward. We fight. We fight for justice and glory. Not really, we fight for the double crown of Austro-Hungary. We might have to add a triple crown uh, for parts of Russia and then a, maybe a, a fourth crown crown for the Americas, which, you know, it'll be like a Burger King crown. It'll be nice. United States and Italy are now fighting, which is why I, okay, I mean, you can do that, but I wouldn't. That sounds like not smart, but okay. So now we're going to build more armor forging. We're going to build more, uh, better torpedo propulsion, uh, for our Whittle guys, because after this war, I'm going to refit those First, I'm going to make sure that my disposable fleet is still lethal against the big ships and is using the biggest bang we can versus the big ships. That is absolutely paramount. You need to use the big bang where you can bring it to bear. And the little ships are my most efficient means by which to do this. So it'll be good. And I have 341 of the fuckers left, so meh. After that, I will try to refit the uh, cruiser fleet to maintain its quote-unquote relevance, even though they are by no means adequate. I still have 40 of them against the will of God. Uh, I'm going to continue to fight the war, even though America has said we really don't want to fight anymore. That's fine, uh, because they are losing. And they know they are. And I think that I can continue to do lots of and lots and lots of damage. I'm going to take my politics and I'm going to go down to America and I'm going to be like naval invasion and I'm going to say give me Northern Colombia because if I can take Colombia from America they will lose their army groups in Colombia and then I could probably take the Panama Canal which would be hilarious because if I can do that <laughs> I've really made their job very difficult. Um, the Panama Canal is one of the biggest strategic impact points of the development of the U.S. Navy. In fact, if you go back in history, there are a series of fleet problems that are run by the U.S. Navy, where the U.S. Navy tries to figure out how to become a global sea power in the modern era of the 20th century. And the fleet problems, a good chunk of them, are about the Panama Canal. And you find a lot of war planning that comes from this era that is very, very interesting. The war planning of this era is fascinating, to say the least. Uh, the 1920s war plans are crazy. They're called the Rainbow War Plans. And one of them, War Plan Red, was a what if we had to declare war on Great Britain. 
It is insane. You'll find a lot of stuff. Oh, we do not negotiate. All right, you know what? I'm gonna say the government can decide what is best and that'll just make everyone happy. I'm continuing to sink transports. <laughs> oh, this is great. Um, so the, the American fleet has very little that it can do against me because I'm a bit of a stinker. However, um, yeah, they, they are not liking this. They are not liking this at all. We're going to move everyone we can into off the coast of Colombia. It looks like we have very okay odds on this. And I'm thinking that they're probably going to try to contest me again. If I fail there, I'll go take Haiti. I will do what I can to make sure Creole food makes it to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Spice things up a bit. I would really like to see that happen. As far as War Plan Red versus Great Britain, uh, it presumes that we would be able to beat the shit out of Canada, but it also presumes that we will not do well at all versus the Royal Navy, because the Royal Navy was fucking huge, and the US Navy was not yet really built up to be a unquestionable global leviathan at that point. So the plan was essentially for our battleship squadrons to run figure eights off the coast of the eastern United States and fight them in our own backyard. I'm gonna to continue to damage them in the Caribbean, and here we go. We have a fight off of Colombia. All right, boys, let's go to war. I think I can do the same trick I did against the last destroyer fleet. I doubt I'm going to do extremely well. I presume I'm going to take some hits that do some significant damage. Their torpedoes are not reliable yet, but when they do hit, they do go off, which is two separate coin flips. Um, they, they typically do a lot of damage to my ships. These things are going to be refit for a while, but I'm hoping to gain control of ports in the Caribbean to bring much necessary spices and food and all sorts of fun things to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. I think a bit of South American cuisine can help everybody. South American food is really good. Um, my favorite South American food is, and I know a lot of Brazilian fans are going to be pissed I say this, uh, I'm going to say my favorite South American food is actually Argentinian because I'm a sucker for chimichurri sauce. And it, as a marinade seasoning and sauce, is pretty much peerless and amazing. And I won't hear anything against it. I know some people don't like chimichurri, and I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Chimichurri is awesome. And it, it really makes things fancy. Huts, could you put up a chimichurri recipe? Please? Thank you. Add chimichurri to your next steak. Trust me, you'll appreciate it. And if you don't, I mean, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Keep trying. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fight off Colombia, and we're gonna do our best to be very, very, very annoying. We're just gonna be annoying. We're just gonna go out there, and we're gonna be very annoying. All right, nine destroyers versus 20 heavy cruisers, but heavy cruisers are a notional thing from the era these things are made. Remember, these are ships from the 1890s. These, these ships predate the Charleston. Oh yes, they're all incredibly low fuel. Oh man, look at that. We are really moving out here. At least they won't be able to collide at full speed. Good job, guys. What a sad navy. Sad boats forward. All right. Looks like they've still managed to fuck that up. Good job, guys. I'm sure these destroyers are... Yeah, they're already on their way here. There's going to be no way they can miss uh, with with how bunched up my guys are. So let's let's just do our best, boys. Do our best. Concentrate fire on the lead ship. Yeah, we're missing and hitting people. That is great. That is what you want. Alright, the weight of fire is going to get apocalyptic as they get in closer because everyone's bunched up real bad. 
and that's fine. Uh, that's exactly what I want. I just, I just want to sink as many of these guys as possible. Continue driving up these casualties. Uh, ooh, that's bad. That's one of them eight-inch shells just bursting alongside of it. Still getting shots off though, uh, which is good for them. They, they are absolutely getting schwacked by my navy though, and he, he vastly overestimated my speed here. Uh, looks like they're all sinking at a certain range, which means my guys are just shooting into the same box over and over again and laughing as flames come out of the smoke cloud. Um, and that's fine. This guy's gonna ram one of my boats and probably do more damage than his own torpedoes, which is uh, reasonable. He's sinking fast, too. Yeah, see, he's actually causing some structural damage there. These guys are really obsessed with trying to sink the lead ship. Um, yeah, it looks like their torpedo squadron is coming in and is going to do a lot more damage ramming than the torpedoes have done. Oh, wow, never mind that. We got a flash fire. Yeah, that's a that's awesome. That's horrifying. There goes a turret. Several hundred tons of steel went airborne. So we finally lost a ship. That guy in the back caught on fire for a reason. Yeah, he's coming in point blank to get torpedo hits. Come on, boys. Pour the fire on. There we go. There we go. That is catastrophic. It's across all frames. Okay, he's launching another twerp. We're getting some hits. That's two torps going in in the Trown. Uh, that is two hits right amidships. That is bad. There's the Smith. And it's going to get rammed to death. Good job, boys. Again, the ramming is going to cause more damage than the torpedoes did, except for that one torpedo that hit right in the magazine. My one ship loss was significant. Um, so it does count against me. Crew loss is a huge part of naval battles. People can say, I sank 30 to 1, but if you lose one battleship and he loses 30 torpedo boats, you lose, even though you kill 30 to 1. That's why you should never look at war in terms of KD. That's a Call of Duty thing. That is not a military thing. If you lose territory, but they lose bodies, and they have more bodies than you have territory, you lose. However, we're going to try to take Colombia from America, then I'm going to go imperil the Panama area, and we'll see if we can't make this work for Austro-Hungary. Because, hilarious, I'm going to do my best to beat up America. If I can cause enough damage, they will surrender. And if they surrender, it probably won't result in a lot of gained territory, in my case, but it will dissuade them from fucking with me in the future. Which is what I want. I want them to stay away from me. That is my main objective here. I'm going to use my navy as the baton club of the age. And I'm going to go around and just schwack anybody who threatens my country. Now, China may be the exception because I don't have the range for it. And I'm just going to say, you know what? That's just your opinion, man. Every time they try something, I'm going to say no. I'm going to invite them to fuck right off. All right, let's see. Uh-huh, uh-huh, all right. Yep, more transports to sink. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna auto-resolve that because that's just one ship. No damage to my fleet. And naval gun barrels, we got better torp stuff. That's nice. France is trying to take the Philippines. Uh, stay out of Asia, boys. It's not gonna work for you long-term. Uh, let's see. So, we have Portland, Maine. And that is actually a large enough seaport for me to put about 20 cruisers, I think. At least of this era of cruisers. These are not good cruisers. What? That's okay. That's okay. It is more than enough to keep my people in lobster, which will please them. I will say, ah yes, the rarest of the rare, and then bring lobster to the Austro-Hungarian crown. 
What's amusing is lobster was once so common it was used as food in prisons in America, and it was seen as very, very low class. Lobster was not seen as a fancy food at all. All right, continuing to sink transports, causing damage to the American industrial complexes. Uh, let's see. Australia canceled an alliance with France. That happened recently in real life. Not going to get into that, but it has to do with... <laughs> well, they didn't cancel an alliance. They more or less said, we're not buying your nuclear stuff. All right, Brance is... Brance. Did I say... I combined Britain and France. That's its name now. Brance. The nation of Brance. Okay, we have another American squadron. I'm not sure if he's leaving or coming back in. That could be a problem. All right, so I'm going to take Colombia from them, cut off this army group, and then I'm going to go for Panama. And I bet that will make them sue for peace, because Panama is necessary to long-range American strategic plans. They are not going to like it. They're going to be very upset. So China's been pushing Britain back a lot in their land war. All right, so it looks like we control Colombia. Which is great. Now let's go check on, uh, let's go check on the status of Britain. They are trying to take a lot of China. They've managed to actually control uh, southern China with the exception of Hong Kong. So China is fighting for its life and that's why they are not coming over to be belligerent to me. This is an American battle group that is significant. It has battleships, it has destroyers, it has enough to be annoying. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to take my battleship fleet and I'm going to send it to try to act as a blocking force. Meanwhile, the very slow cruiser fleet is going to hobble over to Panama and is going to go be annoying. My goal is to take as much as I can from them. That is my strategic objective. I'm going to raise my crew training to 50% so I can at least get these people up to not imbecile levels. Um, and I'm going to hope to cause, again, as much damage as possible, uh, given what I have. Now, I'm starting to get into less flaws for my naval construction practices, which is a huge business to make sure that every boat that comes off that assembly line is the same size and shape. That is something that happens a lot. You'll find you build four battleships, and because of how big these things are, and how technology may change between one year to the next when you lay keels down, you will find slight variations and differences in them. So they could all be in the same class, and as built new, without refits, emerge from the dockyard as completely different ships through many subtle, small changes in design. These iterative changes of design, they'll say, oh, they surrendered. America has surrendered. Looks like I'm not going to have enough to take anything from them. I don't want uh, to indemnify them with war reparations, but threatening Panama was enough. So excellent. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I have all these new ports, which are mine, and I like them. So I'm going to take these 20 cruisers here, and I'm going to have them go all the way back up to Portland, Maine, where they are going to go into refit. All 39. One of them sank in the war, which is sad, but it did its job. My battleship fleet, however, is going to go right back to where it was in Pula. It is where the battleship fleet lives, and it's where I will base the battleship fleet as long as I can. I am also double checking because I think I put some of my other ships elsewhere in southern Russia and I need to double check where I launch those bastards because losing track of your ships as the head of a navy is very embarrassing um, and you need to make sure that doesn't happen because that's not so great. The, the head of the navy will get in trouble for losing their boats. They will say, why why you not know where your boats are? And I'll say, I forgot. And that's not a good answer. That is not a good answer at all. So looks like these guys are in fact in Kitaro, which is where I need them to not be. I need to put them in Pula. So there we go. 
moving my ships, and I will then, I guess, have to go be somewhat belligerent to China at some point in order to make them stop fighting me, but I, I don't really care. Um, I am going to have to do a very expensive refit for these cruisers in order to keep them. Otherwise, I'm going to have to replace them with dreadnoughts, and that will be very expensive. That will be very, very, very expensive. Uh, I'm going to try not to. All right, so we did our best, and I guess we could just start looking for someone else to fight. Um, Germany has been doing a lot of stuff. I'm going to stay out of it because that's their business. I'm going to increase tension with Spain because they were they were talking smack during the war, and um, fuck them. That's there. There's my diplomatic, you know. There's my diplomatic reasons. I'm going to crush their balls. I'm going to go, hey, Spain, you got a lot of nice ports here. Pity any should, uh, you know, fall into hands. I'll be the mobsters of the Mediterranean. I'll show the Italians how that's done. I'll be like, Mafia? Austro-Hungarians got this covered. All right, so Britain is doing its global Navy stuff and being a bully, and that's okay. I'm going to not improve relations with the Soviet Union, but I'm going to try to appease Japan just a little bit. Also... My shipyards are now bigger. Yay! People have stopped buying battleships as well, which is good for me. That way I can build more for myself. Or I can actually refit my whole navy and have enough dock facilities to make that happen. My max shipyard size is now enormous. Uh, 86,000 tons is very, very big. That is approaching modern main capital ship size. And I'm going to continue to expand them because having excess of shipyard is good. You need to have that. This shit can stack up really quick in a war. And you'll find out, oh, I have more than enough shipyard size. But then you suddenly find yourself without it. You go, oh, oh, uh oh, 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 mm, not good. It's filled up with broken boats now because I thought that I could just run over mines. And you'll find some naval commanders just use their boats like a napkin. And things don't go well. So you're going to need those excess dockyard facilities. Transport losses, blah, blah, blah. Japan thinks we're all right because we've been at war with China on paper. And they're just like, that's okay with us. Uh, the Italians, I'm going to improve relations. However, Spain, I'm going to relentlessly bully. I'm going to go after Spain relentlessly. And I'm going to say, you guys were mean, and I want Barcelona. And they're like, those... Oh, what? What was that second thing? And I'll be like, you guys were mean. I'll just keep saying that. They're going to say, that. that's not the second thing you said. And I'll be like, what? The, you guys were mean? And they're like, no, that the second thing. And I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're going to go, you, you, were, you were trying to take territory. And I'll be like, that doesn't sound like me. Got to use the stagger defense in that. That doesn't sound like me. So we're going to go into Barcelona and Valencia. And then we're hopefully going to take Bilbao and La Coruña. And I'll just let them have Cadiz if they want for fun. I'll make them the size of Portugal. And I'll just say, you can deal with it. And they'll go, that is really rude. And I'll say, correct. That is indeed what we're doing. We are disassembling your empire. All right. Uh, da -da 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 uh, Korean Empire, Brazil, and China are getting together. They can do whatever they want. Italy doesn't care about us. That's normal. Uh, they're like, I don't think about you at all. I'm like, that's very rude. Uh, I'm going to increase tension again with Spain because it's hilarious. And we are slowly gaining that sweet, sweet technology that we need in order to make our Navy not sad. My battleships are almost home. And in one more turn, I will then begin my refit of my cruiser fleet. All 39 of these terrible coastal defense ships are now resting, nestled happily in Portland, and terrifying the locals with the smell of paprika and goulash. They're probably sitting around waxing their mustaches, and people in Maine are just going, what in the cinnamon toast fuck are these guys, and why are they here? And we will say, we are here to defend you against Cthulhu. And they will go, oh, cool, and then high five. We'll high five, we'll low five, we'll blow up Innsmouth with eight inch guns. <sniffs> Handled. People will forgive us. No big deal. All right, aerodynamic shell shape. Fancy, fancy. Uh huh. All right, we're starting to learn how aerodynamics work, which is a bit late, but that's okay. 
Don't worry about it. We'll be okay. Now, I need to overhaul these terrible ships, and I am again saying that they are terrible. I am admitting that they are terrible. I am understanding that they are terrible. I'm not pretending that they are competent. These were interim ships, and I'm going to keep them alive for far too long. Far too long. Far, far, far too long. But that's okay. That's, that's what ships are for. Ships are to be hazarded. So the boat class, right? So we're going to go into the boat class and we're going to revisit these. Uh, the Heller class, I'm going to have to bring those back to refit them. That's fine because they're cheap and the refitting shouldn't... Oh, it's obsolete. You can't build those anymore. See, they're collector's items. <laughs> Some people are going to start screaming, Tex, that's not what that means. And I'm going to say, yeah, it is. All right. Oh, they got turbines now. Someone's going to be very upset. Oh, I'm putting the fancy Krupp armor on them. Oh, no, it's got advanced anti-flooding measures. Anti-torpedo measures, better barbettes. Yeah. Oh, man, I could give it a second Citadel if I wanted. I'm not going to do that because I'm not crazy crazy. But, yeah, we're going to stick with Picric Acid because that's done well for us. And I'm giving them radios and much better range finders. So yeah, 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 yeah. Now we're, now we're getting into really fucked up stuff. This boat should not work, but I don't care. Oh man, we got a two inch main deck and we're gonna see if, oh, that's too thick. All right, so let's do 3.6 and 3.6 and let's see if I can get 3.6 on that main deck. And we are right on the money. All right, let's see. Can I get a three inch fore and aft deck? Yes, I can. And I'm fixing some of its problems, but not many. Uh, we're gonna do a 15 inch conning tower. No, that's as thick as they will allow it. Can I do a five inch main belt? No. All right, let's adjust this a little and see if we can't make her a thick boy. There we go, four inch all the way around. That's a terrifying Citadel box for these things. Can I increase speed to 19 knots? Yes. Can I increase it to 20? Holy crap. Yes, I can. These things will live a longer life than they should. Oh, uh, wow. What a terrible boat. Save design. I will keep these things around. Some people are going to go, why? Why do these boats exist? And I will say, none of your business. Mind your own. Mind your own. The main defense fleet will do its job, and you can mind your own business. And they will go, this is an abomination of naval planning. And I will say, you are correct. You can start your own let's play. <laughs> uh, how long can I keep these things around? Please let me die, they will say. No, says Dex. Lamau. All right, so... Four months to refit the whole thing. Can we afford it? Probably not, but I don't care. All right, so then we need to bring the little boats back. Yeah, this is going to be very expensive. All right, let's bring the Heller back. Uh, I'm going to move these, all these little bitty guys, and I'm going to move them over here to Cartagena, where they will be the defense fleet there, and the rest will stay in port. Uh, <laughs> task one, can you make it across the the Atlantic Ocean. If they can do that, high five. Good job, guys. I will give everyone a high five down the road. I'll just be like, you made it across the big water. Okay, so the ships are being refit except for, looks like four are not being refit, which is odd. Uh, those must be ships that are just coming out of repair, meaning they were dinged up in the war and got holes in them and some water in there. So, I imagine these things smell like an old bathroom mat at this point. They've been inundated for so long and just are very poorly kept, and that's fine. These, these things probably smell like a dirty old basset hound that's rolled in garbage, and that's, that's okay. Um, I'm keeping history alive. I'm going to keep these ships from the 1890s around as long as I can to remind people of why you don't do that. Technically still at war with China somehow. It's going to take these guys six months to cross the Atlantic. That's all right. Let's continue our refit. Let's continue our refit plans. Uh, looks like, yeah, okay, some of them were being repaired. The boat class refit. Uh, the last four. Let's get that done. Excellent. 
three months to refit the lot. That's actually really decent. Once we do all of those refits, I will then refit our one ancient battleship. <laughs> this is going to be an abomination. It's going to be like an ocean liner with main guns on it. Like main battery guns on it. Imagine if Japan went to war in World War II with the Mikasa in their fleet. That's what I'm envisioning. Uh, for those of you who know your naval history, you will be very upset. And that's okay. That's okay. That's the fun of a Let's Play. Alternate history is fun. It's very fun. You can say what if, and what if is amusing sometimes. The Austro-Hungarian Empire presents shenanigans. All right, the Italian, oh, the Italian Empire is supporting us. They've, they're coming around, and they're just like, hey, you're all right. My boats are making it across. Oh, hey, look, Puerto Rico went independent. Go Puerto Rico. Good job, guys. Good job. You went independent. I, I'm proud of you. You tried so hard and you did it. You threw off the yoke and now you're gonna make fancy rum for everybody. So as soon as the boat class is done, I'm gonna see about keeping these things uh, around as much as possible. Since my technology has now slipped down to average and I believe that part of that is probably the age of my fleet. They're going, this is not a modern fleet. I'm gonna go, yeah it is, it's got uh, the water's on the outside. So it's more modern than half the US Navy in this playthrough. Um, it, it is it is in their former territory, which is more modern than their navy in this playthrough. And uh, Columbia is fun, and we have all sorts of fun, fancy things. We can we can enjoy them. Now, next turn, these little guys are gonna be in Cartagena, and I can then refit the Heller fleet. Excellent. Looks like we're about to finish refitting our cruisers. And we can refit 341 torpedo boats, and then we can refit the battleships. And I'll start with the Habsburg class before I get into the modern battleships. And I'm not going to do any more shipbuilding for a little bit. Because I need to see if I want to build more micro dreadnoughts. Or if I want to build a new class of dreadnought, which is entirely possible. Um, building a few fancy ships is a nice treat, but don't think yourself a world navy just because you can. The Asats class is uh, definitely not world class. It is a boat. It is not the boat, if you understand my meaning. That's why I have 10 of them. Everyone else is building massive battleship fleets, which are fine. Um, they're very expensive, and they're very expensive to repair, fix, overhaul, and upgrade. Uh, I'm going to tell Japan no. Uh, Japan has now gone to war with me. Fantastic. All right, well, that's on them. Now, I'm going to wait until they come into the Mediterranean to do anything about it. I'm just going to say, mm -mm, not, not my thing. I'm not interested. And they're going to go, come on, do stuff. And I'll say, not my thing, not interested. And I'm going to wait until they get to the Red Sea, and then I'm going to jump on them like the last chopper out of Nam. I'm going to be absolutely insane. Now, it says the Irsats is in the Adriatic uh, because it's on station there. So I'm going to take these guys and move them down off of Port Said, and I'm going to keep them there. That is their job now. Uh, I'm also going to move the rest of the battleship fleet just right next door, and we're going to put them out here because the Japanese are going to have to come quite a bit. They're going to be the terminus of the range as they come into the Red Sea, and that is where I will fight them. I will fight them there before they can get into Suez. As far as the rest of the fleet goes, I'm going to have to refit these fuckers in order to maintain their use. Now, I understand that the uh, Heller class is an embarrassment. It is. I know it is. It's okay. You can breathe easy. I'm not confused. I have a plan. Now, if I have to, I will use these things offensively if I have to, but I don't want to have to. Turbines it has now, uh, still gonna run on coal, still gonna be a mine hunter. I'm gonna make sure it does 30 knots now, which is better. Um, 
Still has excessive pitch and roll problems. Let's see if we can overbuild the ships a little bit. That doesn't really help much. Uh, they come out to 229 tons, so still kind of crap. Uh, still not a great boat by any means. But is it a boat? Does it check the box of is it a warship? Yes, yes it does. I will put 4-inch guns on this thing now. Holy balls, 4-inch guns, Tex? Yes, 4-inch guns. And then we will put a torpedo guy on the back there. And then we're going to just carry some 19-inch torps. Not too many of them. And we're going to put heavy shells on it. And, uh, yeah, that should do. We're going to have uh, these things. The Heller Mark II. And are they good? No. They excessively roll. They excessively pitch. These are terrible in every fucking way. They are barely ocean going. And I am going to slowly, through iterative design, make these hulls last as long as they can. That is my objective. Is to make these hulls last as long as I can. I want these boats to be as nasty as possible, as weird as possible. And I want the enemy to spend their precious torpedo money on them. I, I want them to expend their munitions trying to stop these guys. Because it's not going to work. It says it's going to take 7 months to refit 340 of them. Which I understand there's a lot of them. And that's okay. These boats are crap. And it's going to take a lot to rebuild all these hulls. It's going to cost a fucking fortune. That's okay too. Don't worry. I'll find the money. And if nothing else, I'll be like, well, let's see. Which of these can I scrap? Not the ones in Kataro. Those are my main ones. Not the ones in Nova Sierrisk. Ah, where's the Cartagena fleet? See, so you can save some money on this by doing this. You just go down there and you're like, oh man, the Cartagena fleet. Uh huh, scrap. Don't worry about it. I wouldn't. See? Scrap. Sell them. Saves a little bit of time. Not a big deal. Uh, port. Yeah, see? There we go. And then we just go here and we go Cartagena Fleet. Scrap. There. And now I have only, uh, only 301 of them now, which is fine. How many are Nova Seers? 61? Yeah, all right, I'll get rid of those next. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because nothing has happened here. The Russians have decided not to fuck with me. So I can scrap good chunks of these just to find the money. Because all I need to do is keep these alive for a while. As time goes on, I will have lesser, better ships. And that is important. So let's go ahead and take these guys out. Because they're not that important at all. There we go. Scrap. And now we have 240 torpedo boats, and I can afford this. I can actually afford this. Now it says my technology is advanced despite not really changing much. It's because I got rid of a lot of antiques. But as soon as these boats come out, I won't have a problem, um, and I'll update them like once a decade. Better torpedoes, better engines, longer range Papa John's and I will do my very best to maintain those cruisers I'm not married to those torpedo boats but those cruisers in the Habsburg I'm going to keep around as a reminder of ancient ships can work asterisk building new ships building better pizza Papa John's remember when Papa John was on TV and he said there was going to be a reckoning like it it he, he said he'd eaten like 400 pizzas in 10 minutes or something. Uh, and then he was just like, they're not as good as they used to be. And I'm like, it's 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 a pizza place. It, yeah, they're, they're going to be like, all right, for the most part. Like, you know, you're, you're not going to bring Papa John's out at a wedding. And people go, thank God you brought Papa John's. They're going to say like, man, it's three in the morning and we need a pizza. You know, Papa John's. That That might as well be their motto. I'm going to send the battleship fleet uh, to sit off the Straits of Malacca over here. And I'm just going to see what they do about it. 
Because if Japan won't do anything about it, I'll seize Borneo and some other things and just have it. I'll just be like, mine. I'll just yoink, they go in the back pocket. And the Austro-Hungarian Navy uh, will research uh, whatever is necessary. But in the meantime, the Austro-Hungarian crown will have access to all the wonderful street food of Southeast Asia. Which I think will help. It will help a lot. I've seen pictures. If I had all the money in the world, I would travel frequently. If I had all the money in the world. But I don't. Not really, not really a rich man. But if I did, I would love to go see the world's variety of odd, cursed, and interesting food stuff. Because I've seen a lot of stuff vicariously through other people's uh, lenses of the world. And been like, ooh, that looks fun. Unfortunately, the reality of the world kind of sinks home sometimes. So you just have to realize you get what you get. All right. Get rid of the old Heller class. The Ersatz class is doing all right. It should be more or less mostly okay. I'm going to sit here and just watch. And it looks like that China still has some ships in the area, but it's not doing very well because Britain controls most of China and Germany controls Manchuria. So China is essentially Eastern China only. It's Hangzhou and Shanghai. So, China's gonna stop existing here. Uh, oh, yeah, and a uh, bit of Formosa. So, yeah, looks like England is kicking the crap out of people. But I could, I could take some of these territories away from Japan and be like, mine. I could just go over there and put them in my pocket. You know what I mean? Just go, put them, put them in that back pocket there and laugh. Laugh as hard as I can. All right, boys and girls, let's go and see what these battleships are made out of. Uh, probably still paper. I am well aware the monthly balance is rocketing down because I insisted on turning 240 torpedo boats into slightly better but still embarrassingly crap torpedo boats. Um, I'm fine with that. These things are an embarrassment. I know they're an embarrassment. But that's okay. Having a crap navy is part of this era. It's an era of exploration and stupidity. Now, it does look like England has taken Western India and Pakistan and has let Eastern India be its own affair, which is interesting to say the least. All right, looks like we are taking some transport losses. I don't know how uh, that happens, but it has somehow. I'm presuming this is just normal attritional loss from my guys like ramming boats into piers. But what we're going to hope to do is go over and be so belligerent to the Japanese that they just back off. And if they don't, that's okay. Because I'm just going to take Borneo and all this other shit and say mine. All right, China. Let's see. All right. Oh, United States is threatening us. I'm going to say fuck off. How's that? Okay, they decided to go to war again. And we have very little money to fight all of the people at the same time. Looks like the Japanese Navy is going to Madras, which is okay. Some folks inherit many evil powers. 
is here. Ooh, they sent you down to war, Lord. And when you ask them, hey, what was that you said? Ooh, they only answer, Bill Man, Bill Man, man. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no Hungarian son, Lord. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't Prince Ferdinand, son, Lord. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no Kaiser, son, no, no. It ain't me. It ain't me. I ain't no Hatsburg in one.